Now we're going to talk about the parasternal short axis. From the parasternal long axis view, rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise towards the patient's left shoulder. Then fan towards the apex and up towards the base. Fanning up towards the base of the heart to the patient's head will get you more of the mitral valve, even the aortic valve in view. In this image, we are more inferior or towards the apex in the mid papillary view. The circle in the middle is the left ventricle. On the other side of the IVS is the right ventricle. The arrows are pointing to the papillary muscles and the mitral valve. Fanning superior to the patient's head, you can see the mitral valve leaflets and the fish mouth view. Fanning even more superiorly, and you can see the aortic valve, called the Mercedes-Benz sign. Here's a schematic that will help identify the images in the parasternal long axis view, with the aortic valve in view. Most anteriorly is the right ventricle, with the RA feeding through the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid aortic valve is right in the middle. The left atrium is the deepest structure feeding down into the screen out of plane of the probe. The LA is the deepest structure, so in review, more inferiorly or towards the apex is the mid papillary view. Fanning up towards the head, you can see the fish mouth mitral valve. Most superiorly, you can begin to see the aortic valve. You can also assess for right ventricular strain in the parasternal short axis view. Here we see an enlarged RV and septal bowing showing something called the D sign where the pressure of the right ventricle is great enough during systole to actually cause the IVS to bend in towards the LV. Here's another image demonstrating the D sign.